Welcome back. Today we are going to be ranking every single free-to-play bow. I was initially going to do the infantry bows, but when I looked at all the bows that we have available in the 3 and 4 star pool as well as the grails, I figured that we may as well combine all of them, mainly because of the fact that there aren't that many cav or armor ones. And, no, and there's like one flying one, so I didn't feel like it made sense to separate them all into separate videos, rather just combine them. And I may do that again in the future depending on the category I go into. But in any case, today we are going to be covering the free to play bows. I feel like it may be a bit more difficult to rank them all together simply because of the fact that each one has their own respective benefits and drawbacks. Like, for example, like the infantry ones have all the skills while the flying ones have movement, so it may be a bit more like lopsided in terms of ratings, but I'm willing to give it my best shot. But speaking of ratings, for anyone new here, I rank these units based on two factors, their performance rating and their cost rating. The performance rating is complete subjectivity based on how I believe they hold up in the current meta. While the cost rating is going to be how easy it is to invest into a unit based on a minimalistic level. So for example, if I wanted to try out a Tanya, uh, how many skills would I realistically need to use her on a minimalistic level? Basically something like that. I'm going to be showing one budget build and one premium build for each unit respectively, and then I'll give my rating accordingly at the end of their analysis. So with that out of the way, we may as well get started with the first bow unit, Clarice. Clarice is one of the earlier free to play bows that we got in the rotation. Her PRF is basically a savage blow bow that inflicts minus 7 attack and speed on the target and foes within 2 spaces after combat, and then her special refine gives her a fire sweep effect if she is within 2 spaces of a support partner and attack speed plus 4, which is really nice. It does help patch up her lower attack stat at 31, and her speed isn't bad by any means at 34. And because the fire sweep effect isn't on both phases, she can actually counter attack on the enemy phase, which isn't too bad all things considered. However, she doesn't necessarily have the bulk for it, so you may have to watch out for it because her refine has a 50% HP condition. If you wanted to use her on budget, you can simply give her attack speed ideal 3 with poison strike and double savage blow. You're basically going to be turning her into a chip bot because that's what she does relatively well. You don't really have to worry about her damage output as much on budget, simply because she's not going to have the firepower to take care of a lot of foes with that stat line initially. However, if you want to invest more into her, you can give her something like Deadeye with Flashing Blade and Time's Pulse. She doesn't have slang in her weapon, but Time's Pulse will make Deadeye a 2 cooldown special, and with Flashing Blade, she will be able to trigger Deadeye on every second hit, provided that there isn't any guard effects. And with no follow-up and blade sessions, she should be able to output a significant amount of damage. And thankfully, because of Sniper Bow's Fire Sweep effect, she won't have to worry about counter attacks for the most part, unless you go up against units that have no counter disrupt. But outside of Ascended Fjorm, it's not really all that common in practice. Still, I would say for what it's worth, she does get a 6.5 out of 10 for her performance rating. She does pretty well at max investment. I do worry about her overall damage output, but as a chip bot, uh, it's not too bad. And she does have to be within two spaces of a support partner, which while isn't the worst, can leave some heavy tidings for a wiggle room, especially if there is a foe that is two spaces away, meaning that she may overextend at times if she wants to take a kill. Next we have New Year Korn, who is a rather jack-of-all-trades type of unit. He has relatively similar stats across the board except for his abysmal 18 res, and his weapon is basically just supportive. It grants defense res plus 2 to allies within 2 spaces. So naturally, on budget, you may just want to make him a support unit. You could give him a link skill with double spur defense res. He already comes with spur defense res 2, so you just have to give him the seal. And then the A skill and the special don't really matter as much because He's just going to be using, he's just going to be supporting, so it's not going to be all that impactful. However, if you want to invest more into him, you could actually make him a rather decent combat unit with Spendthrift, since his, de since his defense set is actually pretty high, especially with max merges and flowers. You could give him close foil with no follow-up and attack speed form, so he can actually double more naturally and tank a lot more. It shouldn't be too bad at all, and he should be able to output a significant amount of damage with this set. That being said, he is rather generic at the end of the day. He doesn't really do anything that allows him to stand out from his competition. I would say comparatively to other bows in the game, he just doesn't do enough to stand out, and a lot of units can actually replicate his niche. So for what it's worth, a 5.5 isn't necessarily the worst, and at the end of the day, all these units are workable, and you can still use them to your heart's like content, so you don't really have to like 
worry about like this rating saying, oh, I can't really use Corrin, because you can use Corrin. Next we have Winter Felix, who is one of the few free-to-play bow armors that we have in the game. He has a really good offensive stat line of 38 attack and 37 speed. His bulk is a bit middling, but because of the recent addition of Savvy Fighter, he can actually make use of his speed stat and go with damage reduction skills. He comes with Reindeer Bow, which grants attack defense plus 5 and inflicts guard on the foe during combat, which is not bad at all, especially on budget. If you just want to use him on budget, you can actually just stack distant defense and give him quick repost. I find that with zero merges and zero flowers, his speed isn't bad, but he's probably not going to double reliably, which is probably why you may want to give him something like quick repost, especially since Vengeful Fighter and all the other fighter skills aren't as accessible, unfortunately. I know we have Special Fighter on a seasonal demo, but that's seasonal, so it's going to be a bit more difficult to get. But if you want to invest a lot more into him, you can actually just stack his attack and speed and make him into a Savvy Fighter tank. He is going to be getting a lot more damage reduction this way because his natural bulk isn't exactly the highest, so stacking up his attack and speed is probably going to be the way to go. And as far as his performance is concerned, he is an armor, so he's definitely a lot more reliable, especially with saves. I find that with Savvy Fighter, he is a lot more redeemable, but it is going to be expensive to get. Even so, I find that at max performance, he is going to be doing quite well, which is why I gave him a 7.5 out of 10. Next we have Gordon, who is one of the few Brave Bow PRF units that we have in the demo pool. He comes with a Brave Bow that inflicts minus 4 attack and defense on foes within 2 spaces. So basically he's just going to be hitting a bit harder. He has 31 base attack with 25 speed and 32 defense, so it's not really... The, he doesn't really have the best offenses, but... For what it's worth, the 13 might Brave Bow is going to pack quite a punch. If you just want to use him on budget, you can give him double death blow with Defense Smoke and Moonbow. You can actually also swap it out for Luna because he's never going to trigger Moonbow on the first combat, so it doesn't really matter if you run a 2 cooldown or 3 cooldown special unless you have some sort of breath support. Dull Range is also here just so you can mitigate any sort of visible buff to the foe, which means he can hit a bit harder. And his premium set isn't exactly going to be much different. You could swap out Deathblow 4 for something like Sturdy Impact so he can actually take a hit physically. But outside of that, you could just give him low attack defense, you can keep stacking Deathblow and skills that give him attack. And he's going to be doing quite a hefty amount of damage. However, I find that similarly to New Year Corrin, while he does have a PRF, I find that their performance is still going to be rather lacking in some regard. But even so, Gordon can still pack quite a punch if you are willing to invest into him. I don't think he's- I don't think any of these units are bad by any means. There are enough resources and skills in the game to the point where pretty much every unit can be usable, so I would- I wouldn't really worry about it if you were looking to build Gordon, because he can actually do quite well if you are to invest into him. Next we have Winter Ignatz, who's basically similar to Winter Felix, except he has a bit more speed and less attack, but he makes up for it for having a lot more res. He comes with Tanabo, which is basically an attack defense unity bow, and that can actually stack quite well with other unity skills. Of course, unity isn't on budget, so I really wouldn't worry about that much, but if you want to just use him on budget, you can keep his innate speed defense form and give him attack speed form for his seal. You can give him a link skill and attack smoke, so he's just tanking a lot more and making up for his defense stat a bit more, and he should be doubling a lot more often. The point of giving him attack defense link is so it can actually pair well with Tanabo because it does have unity built into it, so it will reverse any sort of debuff or panic he gets to his attack and defense. And then his premium build isn't really going to be much different from Winter Felix's. The idea is that you just want to stack up attack and speed as much as possible and then make him into a savvy fighter unit with far save. He shouldn't struggle to output a significant amount of damage as well as tank, especially since he has better bulk. And his color matchups are a lot better because he isn't colored, so he is going to end up doing a lot more in the long run. Even so, I find that their performance is rather similar at the end of the day. Both of them are going to be relying a lot on Savvy Fighter for pretty much most of their damage reduction. You can stack up Ignax's res stat a lot more, which is perfectly fine, but defense-wise they're both going to be in the same boat, so I don't feel like bulk-wise they're way too much different, especially since that not every ranged unit is a mage. But even so, Savvy Fighter should make up for the difference, and at the end of the day, they're pretty much the same unit, just different colors. Next we have Young Innis, who is honestly a 
pretty big fan favorite, for a good reason. He comes with a slaying bow that grants attack speed plus 6, and if his special triggers, he gets additional true damage, and he negates any sort of damage reduction skills. His offensive stat line is really, really solid at 37-38 attack speed, and he's infantry, so he gets a lot of perks there too. If you just want to use him on budget, you can honestly just give him quick and pulse with attack speed both and show defense, so you could just make him into a one-shot unit. But if you want to invest more into him, you could actually still keep the one-shot idea, but give him wind sweep and stack up his attack and speed, so that way he's not only negating any sort of counterattack, but he can rely on one shots because most of the units that rely on damage reduction don't have a lot of good natural bulk, so they're going to be falling really, really easily. And to be honest, I find that Young Innis is probably the best infantry bow that you can invest into at the moment simply because his PRF is way too stacked and he has a really solid offensive stat line. And for that reason I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 simply because of the fact that I do believe he is that good. Next we have Junk who has a really really solid PRF as well. He has a slaying bow that grants attack speed plus 10 and a couple effects based on how much more speed he has over the foe. If he has 3 more speed over the foe he makes a guaranteed follow-up attack and if he has 7 more speed than the foe, he can he gets Desperation, which actually makes him really, really solid offensively as well. His offensive stat line of 36-32 isn't bad by any means. In fact, his attack is pretty good, and his speed is more than workable, especially since he gets 10 attack and speed from his weapon. If you want to use him on budget, you can simply just give him a Link skill with attack speed ideal and phantom speed, so that way he's consistently doubling. And his damage output should be relatively good because at base he's getting 60 attack before any skills are taken into account. Of course if you want to make him way more premium you can honestly just give him Deadeye with attack speed ideal 4 and speed defense tempo. The idea here is that you want to trigger Deadeye as soon as possible and with his effects and his bow he should be able to do that simply because of the fact that he gets desperation and a guaranteed follow up. He doesn't have to worry about running no follow up because of the fact that he does have a guaranteed follow-up in this weapon, meaning that it just becomes a speed check if he runs into a unit with an impact or a wary effect. And speed defense tempo is there so he can guarantee his Deadeye trigger. But also I give him Times Pulse so he can so he doesn't have to use something like Flashing Blade and he can use something like Blade Session for more damage output. In any case, I find that Jump is also one of the best free-to-play bows that you can invest into at the moment simply because of the fact that his bow is really, really, really good. He has all the infantry skills. His damage output is really, really high. And speed check shouldn't be that much of an issue because his speed is more than workable. And he gets plus 10 from his weapon before any skills are taken into account. Next, we have George, who has an interesting PRF. He gets damage reduction from Magic Foe's first attack by 30%. And then he gets an additional plus 6 attack if he goes up against a bow, dagger, magic, or staff foe. And that's not bad on paper. But when you consider his overall bulk, it's not really the best. He has 37 base HP, which isn't exactly the highest. And then he only has 24 defense and 22 res, which isn't really that good either. If, especially if you're looking to tank something. But his offensive cell line isn't too bad. He has 32, 32 attack speed, which is a bit on the lower end, but it could definitely be worked out. If you want to use him on budget, honestly, you may as well just keep the PRF and set up against a mage and then give him double fury desperation. The idea here is mainly just so you can get the extra attack, but I don't really feel confident keeping his PRF in the long run simply because of the fact that he doesn't get a lot of damage reduction from it and it's pretty situational. That being said, you can actually make him into a decent Ninja Yumi user. You can give him Flashing Blade 4 with Ninja Yumi so he gets 9 true damage per hit. You can give him Speed Defense Tempo and Time Spell so he can guarantee a Deadeye Trigger. It's basically similar to Jumps, except rather than ideal he has Flashing Blade 4 and he has Blade Session as well. So basically he's just increasing his overall damage output. But also I feel that he doesn't really have the best offensive prowess when it comes to pretty much anything. I also find that his bulk isn't exactly serviceable when it comes to the damage reduction, but you could always ditch the PRF and go with something like a Brave Bow or a Ninja Yumi or whatever the case may be. I just don't feel that he is necessarily worthy of a ranking above 5.5. Next we have George. Again, no I'm kidding. We have George who comes with a slang bow that grants attack plus 5 to allies within 2 spaces and inflicts minus 5 attack on foes within 2 spaces during combat. His weapon is definitely a bit more supportive in nature simply because of the fact that he is just granting stats to allies and inflicting debuffs on foes, but he can take advantage of the attack debuff on foes because it does affect his combat as well. 
He has 36 attack, which is really decent. He has 27 speed, which can be workable, but I really wouldn't stack that. You may as well just stack his better stats, that being attack and defense, but you can make him speedy if you want. The set I'm keeping for his budget is basically just going to be supportive. He can't, I don't feel like he's going to be doing much on budget, so you may as well just make him a support unit. I give him double drive attack with chill defense and HP plus 5. The A slot can be whatever, because there aren't a lot of supportive A slots that come to mind when it comes to budget. The HP plus 5 can be used for something like sudden panic or panic ploy, if you want to use that instead of drive attack. But for his premium set, I give him sturdy impact with times pulse, quick impulse, and special spiral. The idea here is that he acts like a one shot nuke and takes out as many foes as possible while maintaining a fair amount of health. Sturdy Impact grants another plus 10 defense on top of the minus 5 attack he inflicts on the foes. So he's basically getting 15 defense from that alone. And then Times Pulse with Quick Impulse means he can charge up Deadeye instantly. Although you could always have Infantry Pulse support if you were looking to do something like that instead. That being said, I do find that George's performance can be really really good with a lot of investment of course. So I am willing to give him a 7 out of 10. It helps that he can also be supportive in nature so he's not necessarily tied down to being a combat unit. He's rather mixed phase in that regard. Next we have Klein, who is another Brave Bow demo in the normal colorless pool. He comes with a speedy Brave Bow actually, well somewhat speedy. It's ra rather than getting minus 5 speed to his overall stats from his bow, he gets minus 2. And he gets chill defense on the refine. His offensive prowess is also similar to Gordon's except rather than having not so workable speed, his speed's actually not too bad. Because with his bow equipped, he has 31-31 attack speed, which isn't the worst, but it could definitely be better. Similar to George, I find that you may as well just use him as a support unit on budget. You can give him triple chill, which isn't the worst for budget. It's a bit outdated, but if you're looking for a support unit with okay attack, it's not the worst by any means. But on premium, I find that you may as well just invest more into his combat prowess, simply because of the fact that he does have decent speed with okay attack. So you can give him something like Swift Sparrow 3 with Wind Sweep and Times Pulse. So that way he's always getting two attacks and triggering Ruptured Sky on every second hit. Provided that he has it charged every single combat. But with Wind Sweep he should be able to negate any sort of counter attacks which is good because his bulk isn't necessarily the best. And with Blade Session his damage output will be a lot better. Of course I am only willing to give him a 5.5 out of 10 simply because of the fact that He's pretty similar to George with a Ninja Yumi, so I don't feel comfortable giving him something above a 5.5. And his attack stat could always be better, but also, going back on the Ninja Yumi part, it basically power crept his boast, simply because of the fact that it grants additional true damage based on how much more speed he has over the foe, which is a lot better than Argent Bow in my opinion, especially since debuffs can be replicated by a lot of other support units. Next we have Leon, who has a Slang Impact Bow, which isn't actually bad at all. He has 34-30 attack speed with a decent defense set of 30. His weapon grants attack speed defense plus 4 if his HP is above 50%. And just as mentioned, he does have an impact if he initiates combat. Which is really nice actually. If you want to use him on budget, you may as well just stack up his attack and speed overall. You can give him Swift Sparrow 2 with Blade Session and Defense Smoke. I gave him Renewal simply so he can keep his HP above 50%, but there's no guarantee that it will be consistent enough for it to work, but you never know. However, on premium, I made him more into an instant Deadeye user. I gave him attack speed ideal with special spiral and attack speed menace. This is just so he can output a significant amount more damage and tank a bit more because of the attack debuff he inflicts on foes. Simply put, he does output a significant amount of damage. His impact effect can be very convenient. And you could always stack it up with another sturdy impact, but I find that you may as well just stack up his attack and speed because his offensive prowess could always use some additional help. Even so, I find that Leon is definitely one of the more underrated and underutilized bows we have in the game, which is why I'm going to give him a 6.5 out of 10. He's honestly not too shabby, to be honest. Next we have Summer Leonie, who has a really solid offensive stat line of 36-39 attack and speed. Her defense is workable, but her res isn't exactly the best. Her weapon Sunflower Bow grants defense plus 5 and inflicts minus 5 defense on the foe during combat and inflicts penalties on the foe's defense equal to the current bonus on the foe's defense which basically just cancels it out. So essentially she's getting plus 5 attack and defense and negating any sort of defense buff to the foe which isn't bad at all. 
if you want to use her on budget, you can keep her innate speed defense link and give her rouse attack res 3, so she's getting visible buffs to every single stat. You can also give her Swiss Sparrow 2 with speed defense solo, so you can actually make her defense stat a bit higher, but her damage output might lack as a result. However, if you want to use her on a more premium set, you can give her instant bow with attack speed catch and defense smoke and trace, so she can act as a hit and run unit while maintaining a fair amount of longevity because she is negating any sort of follow-up the foe may have. Even so, she is rather generic, but it isn't the worst by any means simply because of the fact that she does have a really solid offensive stat line, she is on a horse, and she has access to Trace, which, while isn't exactly better than near Trace, can be more than workable on someone with a lot more movement, which is why I'm willing to give her a 6 out of 10. Next we have Spring Loki, who is definitely a mixed bag when it comes to quality. Her offensive stat line isn't the worst, she has 31 attack with 34 speed, the speed is pretty decent. Her defense is definitely workable, and her res isn't the worst, but it's not exactly the highest. Her bow, however, it basically just grants Spectrum 2 if the foe's HP is at full. Thankfully, she does have access to a fair amount of skills that can actually help her perform on budget. You can give her Slaying Bow, keep her innate Luna with Flyer Formation, and stack up forms so she can actually function on a Flyer Ball. You can also give her Attack Speed Oath, which is available on Ninja Shamir, so she can actually have a bit more offensive prowess to work with. However, if you want to invest a bit more into her, you can give her Springy Bow with Sturdy Impact, Far Trace, and Attack Defense Prime. The idea here is to stack up as much attack and defense as possible so she can actually eat a hit in the player phase, while maintaining a fair amount of offensive pressure from Blade Session and Springy Bow, granting a good amount of attack and speed, as well as negating any sort of debuff she may receive to her attack and speed. Even so, being a ranged flyer does hurt her skill accessibility, which is a big issue simply because of the fact that she won't have the available resources to perform on the same level as someone like George or Gordon for example, or even Klein, simply because they have access to a lot more stuff. But I am willing to give her a 5 out of 10 simply because she isn't necessarily the worst and she is still rather usable. Next we have Bridal Luis who has a Swift Sparrow Bow with okay offenses of 31 attack and 34 speed, the same as Spring Loki actually. Her defense is abysmal, but her res stat isn't bad by any means, so she can always take a mage hit if she needs to. If you want to use her on budget, you can actually give her speed res solo 3 from an Urk, and then run attack speed solo as the seal, and then give her rouse attack res 3 from a Hilda. So this way, she can actually just set up on a mage, and then go into the desperation range. But her damage output might be lacking. However, if you want to invest more into her, you can always give her something like Rhinebow with Deadeye, double solo with rouse attack speed 4 and a trace so she can act as a hit and run unit. You can always charge Deadeye on a foe like that, but you have to make sure that you don't overextend because if you do then she may just end up being a sitting duck. But you also have to keep in mind that she may not be able to survive a counterattack from a physical foe simply because of the fact that her defense stat isn't really that good. Even so, I am willing to give her a 5.5 out of 10. The reason I'm not giving her a 6 is because her offensive prowess and overall bulk is significantly worse than Summer Leonie's. And while she does have the res stat, I do find that having the defense stat is a bit more valuable in today's day and age. Next we have Niles, who has a slang flashing blade bow that grants true damage if the foe's defense is greater than the foe's res by 5 points. Which isn't the worst, at least not the slang and the flashing blade, that's always nice. His attack set is very, very abysmal at 25. He does have a super boot and the resplendent stats could always help, but I'm not going to count those just yet. I'll be saving those for the maximum set. He does have 34 base speed, which is pretty good, and 34 res, which isn't bad at all. In fact, that's actually pretty high, but his defense set could definitely use some work because 17 base isn't exactly the best. If you just want to use him on budget, you can actually just give him a Desperation set with Attack Speed Ideal and Attack Speed Oath. He can actually trigger Iceberg relatively easily because of the Flashing Blade and Slang he has in his weapon, so you don't even need to use something like Fury Desperation, but you can if you want to. And then his premium set is basically just building on the concept of the initial build, but rather than giving him something like Deadeye, I give him Glacies because I don't feel that his attack set is good enough to run Deadeye. You can run Times Pulse with his PRF so he can always have a 2 cooldown Glacies going. And then with Swiss Sparrow 3 and no follow up, he should be able to double naturally, and Blade Session should allow him to get extra damage output. That being said, 
I do find that his performance overall is lacking, and he can actually do pretty well with the right set, but 25 base attack and 27 with the Resplendent isn't exactly doing a lot of favors for him. But his speed set and wrist set are more than great, so he can actually take mage hits if you need them to. Next we have Norn, who's basically a jack of all trades unit. She doesn't really have a bad stat by any means, but she doesn't really excel in anything either. She comes with Guard Bow, which is basically just distant defense. And her offensive prowess is 32-36 attack speed, which isn't bad at all. She has 31 defense and 27 res, which is also not bad. Again, she's basically just a jack of all trades unit, so you can basically use her in any sort of fashion you want. If you want to use her on budget, you may as well just give her double distant defense with guard bow, and then keep her an 8 speed defense link and run a rouse attack res 3 so she can become an even bigger stat ball against ranged foes. However, if you want to use something a bit more premium, you can give her spend thrift with close foil so she can act even more as a stat ball and output significant more amounts of damage. Give her joint drive attack with speed rest solo, and she can make up for the lower res she has over her defense, and she should be able to double a lot more naturally. Even so, I find that the jack of all trades nature doesn't exactly do a lot for her simply because of the fact that she doesn't excel in anything in particular. And while she's not bad at anything, she doesn't exactly excel in anything either, if that makes sense. Which is why I'm only willing to give her a 6 out of 10. She's still pretty good, especially on the free-to-play side, so I wouldn't really worry about investing into her if you really like her. Next we have Python, who comes with Shortbow, which is basically just 10 true damage when the special triggers. He has 32-35 attack and speed with 31 defense and 20 res. He is not too bad, not too shabby. He's basically another one of those, I wouldn't say jack of all trades per se, because his res set is a bit low. But he can actually be a bit threatening if you stack up his attack speed and defense. If you want to do something on budget, you can always just give him short bow with desperation, rouse attack defense, and brazen attack speed. So that way his damage output is definitely made up for a bit. And his defense that is patched up a bit more so he can actually tank hits. But if you want him to tank hits even more, you can give him plague and bow with attack defense menace, attack speed catch, and attack speed far trace with attack speed solo. The idea here is that you're stacking up all of his best stats so he can actually not only eat a significant amount of hits but output a significant amount of damage too. And I find that he's actually not too shabby which is why I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. He definitely has a bit more going for him than someone like Wrath in my opinion, simply because he has a defense stat to back him up, which does help for survivability. And speaking of Wrath, we have Wrath, who comes with a slang bow, basically has the same offensive stat line as Python of 33-35 attack speed, but his defense is a bit low, and he does have a bit more res, but that's about it. They aren't too different per se, but Python does have the defense stat, which is why I do favor him a bit more. But let's just get to his builds real quick. If you want to use Wrath on budget, you may as well just give him the same set. You give him Swift Sparrow 2 with Desperation Defense Smoke and Brazen Attack Speed 3. And since he has Slay, he can always trigger Glimmer on every second hit. However, if you want to use something a bit more premium, you can actually give him Deadeye with Spendthrift and Heavy Blade. Heavy Blade checks might be a bit difficult for someone like Wrath, but because Spendthrift basically gives a 14 attack point swing, Combine that with Swiss Barrow 3 and Rouse Attack Speed 4, he should not struggle to make Heavy Blade checks whatsoever, and should be able to trigger Deadeye if the foe can counterattack. But I do find that while he can do a lot of work, and he is fairly similar to Python, I do feel that Python does have an edge simply because of his defense set, and their offensive prowess isn't exactly all too different anyway, so I am willing to give Python 0.5 more over Wrath. But still, you can't go wrong with building either. Next we have Rebecca, who comes with a slaying bow that grants Spectrum 4. Her offensive stat line isn't exactly the best, her speed is definitely fine, but her attack stat could easily use some work since it's only base 29. And that's pretty much it when it comes to Rebecca, she doesn't really have anything else beyond her speed. If you want to use something on budget, you can keep Darting Blow with Desperation and give her attack speed oath and blade session so that way she can trigger Moonbow on every second hit. She will rely on getting some sort of bonus so she could get the Spectrum 4 from her weapon, which is why I gave her Oath. And as you can see in her premium build, I gave her a Rouse instead, so she could get more stats and it's much more reliable so she doesn't have to necessarily be around allies all the time. She can also run Attack Speed Solo 4 with Special Spiral, so she can always have Instant Deadeye ready to go. And with Blade Session, she could actually potentially one-shot. It may be possible, but if you're going up against more bulky foes, it's going to prove an issue. 
even so, I find that she's not really going to be all too different from the likes of George. So I did end up giving her the same rating. He definitely has a bit more attack, which helps. But offensively, they're really not going to be all too different. And with Rebecca's bow, she can actually perform on a similar level to George, in my opinion. Next, we have Halloween Rolf, who comes with Candle Wax Bow, who, which comes with Fury built into it. His offensive stat line isn't bad at all. He has 30 attack and 36 speed. The attack could always be better. It's definitely lowish, but it's not necessarily the worst. But outside of that, similar to Rebecca, he doesn't really have much else going in terms of stats. If you want to use him on budget, you can just triple stack Fury with Desperation and Defense Smoke, since he can actually end up with a lot of chip damage and fall into the Desperation range really, really quick. I give him Luna instead of Moonbow, so he can actually trigger a heavier hitting special in every second combat. Moonbow and Luna aren't really going to be all too different in that regard, because he can't trigger Moonbow on every second hit unless he has some sort of accelerated cooldown support. And for his more premium set, I give him Fire Sweep Bow with Double Life and Death and Attack Defense Far Trace so he can act as a hit and run unit with the safety net of Fire Sweep. He will still fall to any sort of Null Counter Disrupt unit, but outside of that he should prove pretty formidable. Even so, I do find that similar to Bridal Luis, his offensive stat line isn't exactly the best, so I find that he may end up doing similar he may end up doing something similar to Bridal Luis in terms of performance, which is why I'm not going to rank him any higher. Next we have Sidgar, who has a really solid offensive stat line of 36-39 attack and speed, and he comes with Instant Bow that grants attack defense plus 4 and impact if he initiates combat, which is really nice. He also has 27 defense, which isn't bad by any means, it's pretty similar to Leon if I remember correctly. And his res stat isn't exactly the worst, but it's not exactly the highest. If you want to use him on budget, you can actually just stack up all three of his stats being attack, speed, and defense. You can keep attack, defense, catch three. You can keep chill defense and run attack smoke with speed defense solo three. So his offensive prowess and his tanking abilities is a lot better. Of course, if you want to use him way more on the premium side, you can give him springy bow with heavy blade and dead eye. So that way he can trigger dead eye on every second hit provided that the folk can counter attack. You can also give him attack speed menace, which isn't bad by any means, and then low speed defense so his offensive prowess is a lot higher. Even so, I'm willing to give him a 6 out of 10. I find that he's basically just green summer Leonie, and similar to an extent better Python. Python does have a bit more defense, but his offensive prowess is definitely a lot better, which is why I'm willing to give him a 6 out of 10, but at the same time, he doesn't really do anything much different from someone like Python or Wrath or summer Leonie which is why I'm not going to rank him any higher than the 6. Next we have Setsuna, who grants Spectrum 4 to herself if she goes up against a Bow, Dagger, Magic, or Staff foe, and she gets Attack Speed plus 5 and Penalty Neutralization to her Attack and Speed if she has a visible buff on herself or any sort of bonus. Her attack set isn't exactly great. It's definitely lower than Rebecca's, which isn't great at all. She does have a lot more speed, which is really nice, but what good is speed if you're not going to output a good amount of damage to boot? If you want to use her on budget, you can basically use the same set I ran on the budget Niles. You can give her a deal with Oath and Desperation. And Blade Sessions or Damage Output isn't exactly the worst in that regard. Oath is perfect is going to be perfectly fine because she can soak any sort of attack and speed penalty she may receive. And then on the premium side, you can give her a Ninja Yumi set. I remember back in the day, a lot of people would use Quad Suna because she had a lot of speed for her time. And she still does have a lot of speed, even to this day. So people would run Brave Bow with a lot of other skills, and she would actually quad a lot, which was pretty cool. So you may as well just do an upgraded version of that with Ninja Yumi, Deadeye, and Flashing Blade with Time Spell, so she could trigger Deadeye on every second hit. Even so, similar to George, her performance is going to be pretty much the same. She's trading a significant amount of attack for a significant amount of speed. So while the speed bonus may be helpful, I find that having a bit less attack isn't going to really do her any favors, which is why I'm going to say that with the Ninja Yumi set, and even with her PRF, I find that she's not really going to be doing all too much, so I am willing to give her a 5.5 out of 10. Next we have Fallen Takumi, who's actually supportive in nature because of the fact that he inflicts 7 damage on foes within 3 columns and panic on the second turn and third turn with his refine. He also does get plus 5 attack and speed, and inflicts 7 damage to target foes within 2 spaces, which is basically just Savage Blow, which isn't too bad whatsoever. His offensive satellite is 
not the worst. He has 31 attack with 34 speed, which could always be better, but it's not bad by any means. If you want to use him on budget, you may as well make him a chip bot with double savage blow, because Scotty also grants savage blow to him, so he can actually inflict 21 points of chip damage to foes within two spaces, which isn't bad at all. Wind Sweep is here, so he can actually just negate any sort of counter attack and survive and get savage blow going, which isn't bad at all. And you can always just keep Fury, even though it does counteract with Scotty's 25% HP threshold, you can still use it, just because it grants extra stats. And then on the more premium side, you can actually just make him into a support unit for infantry allies. You give him Sea Duel Infantry 4 with HP plus 5, Infantry Pulse, a Ruse, and a Rally Plus, and, she, and he should be acting as a really solid support unit. Overall though, while his offensive prowess isn't really going to be any better than someone like Clarice or Satsuna or anything of the sort, I find that his supportive nature is going to help him out a bit more, which is why I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Next we have Tanya, who comes with an okay offensive stat line of 30 attack and 37 speed. The attack could always be better, but the speed is pretty good. Her, she comes with Shining Bow, which is basically true damage if the foe's defense is greater than the res by 5 points, which can work, but it's not exactly the best. You could always keep it on budget if you really want to, although I would recommend just getting rid of it. Still, the true damage could come in handy every so often. You can give her attack speed ideal 3 with oath and chill defense so her damage output isn't exactly the worst. And with flashing blade she can trigger moonbow on every second hit. And for the premium set I gave her something that can help her more with her damage output. I gave her attack defense menace with carrot tip bow so she can get extra points of true damage while also getting a significant amount of attack from the menace. She gets attack speed ideal 4 which pairs well with menace and low speed defense so she can double more naturally. And that should help her out with her damage output a lot more. That being said, her stat line is still rather similar to Satsuna in the sense that they basically have the same attack and speed for the most part, so I'm not really going to give her anything above Satsuna, especially since she is lacking a PRF that allows her to stand out from the competition. And finally, we have Virian, who comes with a Sudden Panic Bow that grants Spectrum 4 if his max HP is above the foe's HP plus 1. His offensive stat line isn't the best. He comes with 31-31 attack speed, which is fine but it's nothing to write home about. His HP is definitely really high though, so you could always take advantage of that, which is what his PRF is meant to do. If you want to use him on budget, you may as well just make him into a support unit with chill attack and chill speed and infantry pulse, so you can actually just use him on an infantry team and give allies rallies and stuff, so they can double more often and tank more often. Meanwhile, with his more premium set, we're still capitalizing on the support niche. You stack up his HP stat, you give him Rally plus, you give him Moonbow if you just want him to enter combat once or twice, depending. You give him even Pulse Die so he can negate any sort of specials that the foe may have. And Infantry Pulse is still there so you can support Infantry Allies at the start of turn 1. Virian is still decent as a support, but I find that he doesn't really do anything in particular that allows him to stand out comparatively to someone like Takumi who can not only inflict damage, but also panic on foes within three columns, which is a lot more helpful in my opinion, which is why I'm going to give him 0.5 less than Takumi. And yeah, that's about it for the free-to-play bows. The goal with this video was basically just to give my overall thoughts and opinions on what the best bows you can invest into are. This is by no means a definitive list, it's just my mere opinion. And I do think that it could help for those who are looking for some sort of guide, but it's nothing that you necessarily have to like take word for word. You, there, all the bows are definitely workable by all means, so you don't really have to necessarily stick to one or the other, but it's just one of those things where it's like if you have a limited amount of resources, you may as well invest into something that will do much more in the long run. Even so, if you like this video and you would like to see more, make sure to like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you later.